I'm Drew Baker, winner of MasterChef UK 2010, and I'm going to show you how to make the perfect curry. Whether you like a korma or a vindaloo, you eat it once a month or five times a week, us Brits adore curry. I've been working with Warwick University to come up with a scientific formula for the perfect curry dish. We found lots of interesting findings. The fluffiness of the rice is important, the height of the rice was important, the consistency of the curry too was very important. But what we find was the key to this were the ratios. The ratios of rice to curry on the plate, but ultimately it's down to recreating that perfect mouthful on the fork, which is an equal measure of rice to sauce to curry. So to start off with, my coconut straight into the pan. Right, and that's exactly what I'm looking for, that wonderful golden brown color. And now into that pan we go with our whole spices. So we've got our cinnamon, star anise, black peppercorns and fennel seed. So I'm gonna add a couple of the dried chilies to that. ground coriander and chilli powder and stir that immediately and then just a little splash of water to give us a lovely paste <clears throat> and the last ingredient to go in at this stage is our turmeric in with the coconut now you can use a food processor at this point or a spice grinder if you have one but I really find it satisfying doing this in a pestle and mortar. In with our oil and in with our red onions. Now the key at this point is to cook these for as long as possible so that you bring out all those natural sugars in the onion and that's where the sweetness for this dish comes in. So now that the onions have softened, they've got that wonderful caramel smell to them, I'm gonna go in with the ginger and garlic. There we go, and now probably for one of my favorite ingredients, and that's fresh curry leaves. These have got a smell like no other, just straight in. And now for our tomatoes. So now that our tomatoes have started to soften, they're pretty much cooked through, back in with our gorgeous coconut and spice mix. And back into the whole spices again. Now finally, a touch of moisture, I'm just going to add a bit of water to that, but by all means use chicken stock, which will add to the depth of the flavour in that curry, until you get a nice, smooth, uniform paste again. That's our paste pretty much ready. Now, what I'm going to do is set aside half of this. It means the next time you want our perfect chicken curry, you don't have to make that up from scratch again. It's ready to go, all you need to do is add the chicken. Through, making sure all of those pieces are coated. So that chicken just needs to cook through now. And while that happens, I can focus on the rice. I've got my rice in the pan, so it's pre-soaked, and I'm using 60 grams per portion, which when it's cooked, will be 100 grams per person, which is perfect for our formula. I just need to bring that up to the boil. Now, I'm using pure basmati rice, and it's essential to use the best quality rice you can get your hands on. The reason being that basmati cooks in such a way that the grain elongates, and that gives you that perfect fluffy rice which we need for the ratio. There's an equal amount of rice to air so that when we do construct that forkful of rice, of curry and of sauce, it gives us that golden ratio. I'm just going to pop the lid on, let that rice finish cooking, by which point the chicken will be done too. So that's my chicken cooked through. The rice, wonderful and fluffy as promised. And I'm just going to finish the dish by adding a pinch of green chilies, a few sprigs of fresh coriander, just roughly torn and scattered over the top. And finally, a little squeeze of lemon for that kick of acidity. And stir it all together. And there it is. There's the recipe for my perfect chicken curry using our golden formula for one part fluffy rice, one part sauce, and one part chicken. For the full recipe and for our clever formula, go to tilda.com.